No, yeah. So we started our company um, in 2015. I think we registered uh, Mirror Image Media. We were actually in university at the time. Right. We were doing promotional videos for Saint of X. So we were, you know, speaking on camera, doing interviews with students, and then we were also behind the scenes and and doing kind of like different initiatives for campaigns, such as a lot of social issues. So like, mm -hmm. um, you know, violence against women on campus, or like, you know, Chandrayama cystic fibrosis, right. different. Um, yeah, initiatives like that. Um, and then I think that also kind of made us realize that we were more passionate about kind of utilizing video to address issues and we saw an opportunity there. So anyways, again, <laughs> so we started our company 2015 um, and it's a video production company. We're based in Halifax um, and we, we're full, full service video production. So we, right. we direct shoot, edit and produce uh, the content, of course, we outsource folks. Um, but yeah, we've worked with, you know, hundreds of clients <laughs> since over the years. Um, we've done a few documentaries, feature length, and also short documentaries and docu series. Right. Um, but really, our goal is to combine our craft for storytelling and film to make change uh, through, you know, social and environmental issues. Right. Um, it's so interesting because something even like when I was looking at some of the questions that you, you folks had about. <clears throat> like what to teach and stuff in, in schools and it's like fundamentally like we should be all taught about like social and environmental issues mm -hmm. because like if anything those are opportunities for the next generation to uh, incorporate in their careers whether they're running a company or as an entrepreneur or not mm -hmm. um, and I think you know had we been exposed to more of that at a younger age maybe we would have started uh, to think about that earlier but um, yeah. Um, and yeah, I think sports was really good for us. Like we both participated in sports through junior high and high school, um, which kind of just like teaches you, yeah, how to just like commit to something um, and like be more regimented in that way. Um, and yeah, the teachers, a lot of the teachers that we had were amazing. But a lot of the right. teachers that we had were, I just like, it's unbelievable. Now I'm an adult, like looking back at some of the experiences we had, I'm just like, these, some of these teachers really limited mm -hmm. are lim and are still limiting children in right. such a big way. I'd say 10 out of 10. <laughs> Okay. We were like maybe. maybe like eight or nine, but like no, but close to breaking the scale. Yeah, but Marie, that's because like we were like we were massive keeners. I think in terms of like actually actually being engaged right. in the subject matter, it's right. probably like a solid four. Right. But the engagement in terms of like 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 what's when, when you okay I guess like your question when you say engaged because They're you different. say four but it's like if you're if you're doing if you're that keen and like participating and and going above and beyond to get good grades you're considering yeah, but that's also because like we wanted to get a scholarship yeah but do you mean like engaged interested yeah engaged you know? I guess would be different than interested because yeah. you don't have to be interested necessarily to be engaged so okay. but it helps academically academically we were like we're Capricorns like yeah. our birthday's in January we literally it's are outrageous. obsessed <laughs> the work with, ethic it seems like you were engaged, we're prepared so just, and yeah exactly right, but right. in terms of like the level of interest like Pre-cal, sure. Like, sure, have pre-cal. But what is pre-cal doing in high school? Right. Honestly, like from a science perspective, yes. This is just my opinion, but like... This is getting too much for me. No, but like... like you need to just... But like what you're saying, like just more practical stuff in high school, like taxes or like other like exposure to like yeah. social psych, etc. Would have been awesome. Yeah. I think that... Yeah, we're just we, arguing now. I think, like, for, I guess to say from my perspective, yeah, let's hear it. is, like, I was just really keen on getting a scholarship. Right. So, yeah. like, so you, like, like you know, graduating with college. honors was, like, a no-brainer for me. Right. Like, I was going to do that. Yeah. So yeah. I would say, like, pretty substantially engaged. Right. I wasn't, like, necessarily passionate or interested in, like, chemistry and biology. A lot of the science-related right. courses that I was taking, I wish I had taken intro to business, right. you know, I wish I took some of those like in quotes bird courses that were more um, aligned with like, like creativity and, you know, those types of things. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I, I feel like we were just like, taught to like, pursue math and science, right. if you're good at it. I think more collaborative and creative. I think a mix is really important. Um, but I think it's 
for things to be sticky in your brain, you have to like have your own associations with them right. in order to like memorize and like learn in that regard. So the more relevant it is to someone's life, the more sticky and memorable it will be right. and the more passionate they will be about it. True. So like, yeah, kind of like what you said, like allowing students to like start their own businesses and like mm-hmm. they're super excited about it instead of just being like, these are the five ways of how that a business can, yeah, gets to start exactly. or like whatever, you know yeah. what I mean? So like, yeah, yeah personalizing things um, is definitely really important. I think like we were both really, we both really love like art courses I actually like literally side note last night my friend um I was at a friend's house and she like threw all these magazines on the table and she was like she popped all these glue sticks on the table and she's like we're making um collages co- no but like it's like for your future self of, oh like, my god what, what is it called like board? yeah vision board <laughs> and I haven't yeah. cut with scissors or like used a glue stick since I've right. literally been in elementary school and I can't even tell you like it was so nostalgic, and I was just, like, thinking about how much I used to love, like, art right, class. Right, right. Um, it's, like, yeah. on. And oh, like, my God, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And just, like, letting your imagination kind of flow. Right. So important. Yeah, I can't, I can't express enough how important it is for teachers to be open-minded mm-hmm. and not be so opinionated. Right. And, like, for for like creativity in my opinion is the biggest thing that should be taught in high school and there should be not like there should be less boxes of like limiting children's abilities basically it's like we're so we're we're born into this world and we're so like young and like vulnerable but we also have like so much potential so many ideas Mm -hmm. and like through every minute of every day we're basically just like squash. All of the, all of the creativity is basically just squashed in children every oh, yeah, single day, you're right, you're right. through media, through parents, through family, through everything. You know, like we're putting all of these pressures and stereotypes into these young, fresh minds, and just like manipulating it into the world that it is right now, which is yeah. a very capitalistic world, which is yeah. unfortunate. Yeah. But there's a lot of teachers. You know, we had some great experiences with teachers growing up that didn't have that kind of like locked box mentality like even the film and tv course that we were in there was no really rules Mm -hmm. and it's interesting because like you would think like maybe some parents would be like oh the teachers that don't have rules or that are more open-minded are like lazy or like you know not doing it right and like Mm -hmm. I want my kid to be like smart grow up be a lawyer be a doctor but it's those teachers that like don't limit your creativity that like I don't know help you find your passion I think quicker yeah um, so yeah, that, that's definitely something that I can't stress enough. Um, so we had like really good relationships with most of our teachers, but is it their teaching styles that I love? I don't know. Or, or right. just like their personalities and just like, yeah, yeah. them like right. caring and making sure that we're like, um, I, I mean, I could tell you all day what I didn't like. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there were some great teachers that we had. I'm yeah. Think about, like, specific I think examples. just teachers that, like, let, like, sometimes would, like, obviously they have to stick to some of the, like, teachables and the outcome right. and the curriculum, but teachers that would be willing to kind of go off the rails a bit and, like, let you kind of run with it. Right. And, like, come up with your own ideas or come right. up with your own approach to a project or whatever it is. I know that's so generically said but um yeah I think just giving like students like a little bit of autonomy like Mm -hmm. sometimes Mm -hmm. to because that that's gonna ultimately you know they're gonna pursue or or pursue certain things that they want to do or that they're Mm -hmm. passionate about and then their interest becomes a bit more invested yeah I think the biggest thing is just um having more exposure to many types of learning and many types of role models and people Mm -hmm. so having more guests coming in to give like to talk about their experience working in very different realms whether it's filmmaking or music or science or whatever just exposing kids um to more to more than what they have been exposed to is so important Mm -hmm. good good answer Yeah, I mean, I can't stress enough how much I wish we learned more about, like, finances and tax stuff, even at a younger age. Ultimately, every person should should learn about taxes in some regard. And so Mm -hmm. I feel like having that, 
as a mandatory class in high school is really important. I mean, figure out a way to make that engaging. I don't know how you're going to do that. Mm -hmm. Good luck. But it's so necessary. Um, And yeah, I mean, like the finances, the finance side is really important. Like my partner is a really good example of that. She took, she went to Mount A. She took um, like community economic development. She became a photographer. And like because we took business and also like looked it up mostly all on our own. Honestly, YouTube was arguably more important than our business degree. But yeah, I mean, she's an example of that because she had no, she wasn't exposed to anything business related or numbers or finance or anything. And, you know, like I, like that has been a big thing for like me to come in and like teach her how to do it to make this sustainable. Because ultimately, passion and everything all you want, great ideas, but ultimately it comes down to like the numbers and knowing how to like run and yeah. yeah, And whether that's, maybe it's not your thing. So like collaborating with someone um, on that is really important as well. Yeah. Yeah. More numbers, more numbers stuff. But also again, like, you know, we're a bit unique where, you know, we're telling more social environmental impact storytelling, kind of like that's our, our, our thing with our, with the films and commercials we make. Mm -hmm. Um, But I can't stress enough, like, how much there needs to be more socially and environmentally driven courses or education in some regard in high school. Mm -hmm. I think for me, there's three things. Leadership, like charisma and leadership. Mm -hmm. So like courses like I was talking about, like the drama courses and that kind of thing, like whether that's drama or leadership in music or leadership in sport, taking initiative and like, Being vulnerable and putting yourself out there, it's number one for being an entrepreneur, I think. Well, one of them. Um, The second one is the numbers kind of thing, like understanding numbers and understanding, um, yeah, I can't stress it enough. It's like one of the most important things. But again, you can collaborate with someone as an entrepreneur to do that as well. Um, And then the other thing is problem solving. And I think the biggest thing about being an entrepreneur is failing and being okay with failing. And literally our career and most people's careers are just like you fail and you learn and you fail and you learn. You don't feel like that's not like instilled or like um, encouraged in high school. Yeah. It needs to be. You always have to succeed. You always have to succeed. And there's a lot of hand holding in high school that happens. And like it's really important for students to fail and not necessarily fail their grades, but like, you know, make mistakes and, and that sort of thing to like learn. learn from it. yeah. There's yeah, so sure. many things I look back, like today, yesterday, last week, I last know. year, 10 years ago, whatever, yeah. that have contributed to our business where we've, we've sucked, you yeah. know, we've made crap content, you know, we made the wrong decisions, whatever it is, but it's all ultimately got us here for yeah. a reason, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. But I, I want to say something about the grit thing. I feel like, I, f- I don't know if it's grit, but... I feel like it's kind of like romanticized in a way. I feel like, I don't know, there's there's just so much emphasis on like the grind and grit and like whatever. And it's like at some point, like there needs to be balance. It's not sustainable. Um, burnout is so friggin' real. And like, I hate to say it, but like our generation millennials, like, you know, our parents bought their houses for $100,000. Like <laughs> houses in, in Nova Scotia are like $500,000. It's like, it's like at some point it's like unrealistic to like fulfill the stereotypes of what our parents set before us yeah. because we'll never get there. I don't know. And, and and with technology advancing and whatever, it's just like I feel like there's a there's a point where people are kind of pushing back a little bit against um, even like what I said before, like the work life integration, because I don't know, there there does need to be a bit of balance there. Yeah. It is romanticized. Like there, it's not sustainable to, to be an entrepreneur and work twenty four seven and and yeah. like you know. And it's also like you know there is a huge aspect of privilege with entrepreneur. Thousand percent. Like being an entrepreneur, like you have to be able to like be in a in a circumstance where you're able to put yourself out there, mm-hmm. and risk isn't like it's it's risky, but it's like, you know, like we're sitting here as two white women, and like yes, we're women and we're queer, but like. How can we get more like kids of color, queer kids, like young girls involved in small business and being entrepreneurs? You know, like we're doing an injustice in this country by not having more um, of those folks involved. Yeah, or more program or funding or whatever it is sure. towards yeah. towards those individuals. So yeah. yeah.